Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. You have to deck wherever you're watching the tech video. I don't care. It's life be like that sometimes. Anyways, have you heard of today's video sponsor? It's actually our website, UFD Deals, where you can check out all of the best tech deals that are out on the internet and you can find, hey, oh, the CPU I've been wanting to buy. Look, that's on sale. Click it, it takes you to Amazon or wherever it's on sale and you save money. We make money because they're affiliate links, but it's a, it's a gigantic winning operation we got going on with the UFD deals. So if you wanna check it out, the link for that is in the video description, ufd.tech. Go check it out if in case you want to save money on the internet buying things for tech stuff. Do it. Okay, so let's talk about the news today in tech world. And that's first up, apparently, good news is that uh, NVIDIA is not the only team that's trying to bring ray tracing out to the masses and doing that at a huge expensive cost. It appears that Intel has had their one API rendering toolkit, which does allow access to ray tracing in whatever form that you may want. And we have our very first game coming out with it, potentially even in a DirectX 11 implementation, whereas Microsoft's DXR, which is what NVIDIA utilizes, is only available on DX12, and that is World of Tanks. Yes, my friends, World of Tanks is gonna be the very first Intel ray traced game coming out in an update soon. So that is cool. But at the same time, it's also not going to be implemented in a huge way. Not everything is going to be ray traced, just like in most of NVIDIA's RTX titles, you choose between one thing or another when it comes to ray tracing. Shadow of the Tomb Raider has ray traced shadows. Other games have global illumination. Other games such as Battlefield V started off with ray traced reflections. So there's a whole bunch of different ways you can implement ray tracing. With World of Tanks, it's primarily going to be used with shadows and with uh, direct sunlight in the game. So if you're not in direct sunlight with your tank, it's not really gonna be something that's gonna matter. And there's no word on the performance hit of this update just yet, how much it will slow people down. But considering that World of Tanks is not a first person shooter game and can potentially run at 60 FPS just fine, and that would be constitute as fine, whereas FPSs tend to need 144 FPS before people uh, stop complaining about how slow it and laggy it feels. Uh, it could potentially be something that is good, and it should be available for all graphics cards that support DX11, not just something that requires special computational horsepower like RTX and uh, cards with their RT cores and tensor cores. So it's cool, but we still have to see it implemented, see what the performance impact is on various graphics cards. And likely, even though you might have a GTX 960 that can run DX11 games, you probably don't wanna turn ray tracing on, my friends. But Intel rolling out a feature to the masses so that NVIDIA doesn't have their time in the spotlight with their RTX fun. And in case you haven't noticed here on UFD Tech, we're all about bringing ray tracing to places it doesn't deserve to be, such as with Minecraft on an AMD graphics card. In case you haven't checked that video out, we did it with a 5700 XT and an RX 580. So if you wanna see what ray trace Minecraft looks like, on an AMD card, you can check out our previous video. And we actually have another video coming out, I believe this weekend with ray tracing on Need for Speed Underground 2, one of the best nostalgia racing games of all time. Reese will say it's most wanted, but I most want to not care. It's most wanted. Shut up. Well, let's move on into some more Intel news, which is that we are getting BIOS updates for the upcoming Intel i9-9900KS. Motherboard vendors are rolling that out. Intriguingly, it's only being rolled out to Z390 motherboards at the moment, not Z370 or anything below that, such as B360, which begs the question as to whether or not the 9900KS will find support on those motherboards. It could just be that we're early in the implementation as it's only ASRock and Asus that have come out with BIOS updates for the chip. So we'll have to see what happens as time develops, but it could be that the eight core, 16 thread, five gigahertz, all core boost CPU might only work on a Z390 motherboard, which isn't such a bad thing. If you're buying a $500 chip, buy the Z390 chipset. 
makes sense. And then there's uh, some details coming out about Intel's Tiger Lake U series processors, which are supposed to debut next year with Gen 12 Project Z graphics. And it's been revealed through somebody uh, picking through a few things that it's actually going to have 50% more L3 cache than current U series chips. So Intel bringing out more L3 cache, just like AMD did with Ryzen 3000 this year, helps a little bit in gaming performance, helps a little bit here and there. So we'll see how the performance of Tiger Lake U will be, but from preliminary benchmarks, it actually appears to be pretty good. Speaking of pretty good, that's not good enough. You want great? That's not even good enough because today we're talking about Sony's Crystal Cinema display at 16K with freaking micro LEDs, okay? So I want, I want you to imagine a 63 foot wide 16K TV. I want you to imagine that. Now I want you to tell me what you think the price is. Okay, because you're wrong. You're dead wrong. Reese, what do you think this is gonna cost you? 16 Ks, 63 feet. More money than I've ever made in my life. That would be correct. Yes, more money than Reese has made in his lifetime, probably if he just only got it in 4K because they're little panels that you can modularly put together to create a gigantic 63 foot structure. So the 4K screen costs $720,000 if you use this crystal LED setup. The 16K screen is gonna set you back a cool 5.8 million dollars. It's gorgeous, but it's going to be the best thing that you ever had. And if you have 63 foot of wall to put this on, you deserve it. Okay. All right. You've earned a lifetime of gorgeous Sony 16K. But while we're on the topic of TVs, let's go ahead and talk about Google Stadia for a moment, which it's been um, revealed due to a leaked slide from Google showing that Android TV support for Google Stadia should be coming out in 2020 or 2021 so that it's not just Chromecast support for the TV. So if you have a set top box that has Android TV, you should be able to benefit from Google Stadia in a little bit. And then more Android TV news, Google is actually implementing a data saver mode right into Android TV, which will help for uh, people who are potentially on a home 4G or 5G network or have a data cap on their home Wi-Fi. This could potentially help. Currently, it's only being rolled out in India, but could potentially see rollouts into further markets later on down the line. Speaking of rolling out into markets, the Wi-Fi Alliance has published and fully readied its certification for Wi-Fi 6. So now Wi-Fi 6 certified devices can start being implemented, but there are a few that are already out on the market, such as the Galaxy Note 10, the first smartphone that has Wi-Fi 6 certification, the iPhone 11 coming out this week, next week, that's also gonna have Wi-Fi 6 but you also might wanna check with the previous implementations that we've been seeing on certain motherboards that have Wi-Fi 6, even though it's not certified because it doesn't actually, they didn't have the certification ready. So they had a lot of the features, but not the entire certification, but you can see how that goes. I mean, it's better than Wi-Fi 5. Screw Wi-Fi 5. Forget it. And you know who's forgetting who? Uber. They're forgetting their drivers, at least in New York City, where because of a regulation that was passed by New York City regarding how ride sharing apps could potentially work in the amount of time that they're allowed to spend driving around to find fares and a minimum wage clause that's kind of in there, Uber has begun or will begun, begin today locking their drivers out of the app in order to comply with New York City standards. Lyft, its competitor, has already been doing this for several months in order to comply with New York City regulation. New York City implemented these things to cut down on congestion in Manhattan, but Uber and Lyft obviously opposing this, saying that there's no evidence that this would happen. It's ridiculous and you're just gonna cost us issues. But Uber not just locking people out of the apps, they're also gonna show um, when they're locked out different places that they could go to cut down on searching for fares in high traffic, high volume areas. So uh, a fight between ride sharing apps and governments. I love it. Everybody should fight more. Reese fisticuffs. I'm, I'm there. Let's go. Let's go. Speaking of certification of Wi-Fi bands, not in order at all. Let's talk about the FCC approving a 3.5 gigahertz band 
Also not Wi-Fi, but likely will be implemented in 5G because the 3.5 gigahertz band has already been rolled out in 5G in Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. The US is now having uh, FCC approval for that. A lot of companies are obviously vying for this band, and most of the new smartphones that have come out in the last couple of months already support 3.5 gigahertz, such as the iPhone 11. The Pixel 4 should be supporting it as well as the Galaxy Note 10. And just a little quick teaser, because that's all I have on this, Mazda, Mazda, however, how do you guys say it here? Mazda. Mazda, okay, that's how we say it. I've heard certain people call it Mazda in South Africa. Uh, yeah, something. Which pisses me off because South Africans pronounce A as ah, except for when it comes to Mazda, which Americans do. Some South Africans say Mazda. Mazda! <laughs> Why? Because that's how it's pronounced. It's not at all. It is. It's an American company, shut up. Uh, they're planning on rolling out their first electric vehicle at the Tokyo Motor Show, and OnePlus is also planning on rolling out their smartphones to Verizon in 2020, starting likely with the OnePlus 7T, which is going to be unveiled on September 26th, and the OnePlus 17 Pro is going to be announced next month in October, which, speaking of announcements in October, the Pixel 4 finally got its date set for October 15th, with a bunch of media getting invitations to check things out, and with the October launch of Pixel phones all the time. It makes sense that this is when it's going to happen. And then more Google news, which is that Google bought a patent and a set of intellectual property regarding certain um, smartwatch features that Fossil, the watch manufacturer, had made. And it was unknown what that was, but it finally came out that it actually is for a hybrid design smartwatch, which allows a digital screen with analog hands. And it's codenamed Diana, standing for digital and analog, and potentially we could finally see a Pixel watch that could support both features with a digital screen and an analog handset. I would love that. I actually love it. I would love it. I want it. And then slightly more Google news, YouTube is apparently testing out different profile cards for people who comment on videos, because currently if you check on somebody's username in the YouTube comments down below, it will just take you to their YouTube channel page, which either has never been started because they just have an account to talk to people, or it's out of date, but the profile cards will be there to allow individuals to look at their comment history on a given channel. So if you've been commenting on UFD Tech and then I click on your profile card, I can see that you've just been trolling us for the past six months in a way with you. Tway with it, Chauncey. But I'm not gonna tway this, which is Oracle building a new supercomputer that actually has 1,060 Raspberry Pi 3 Pluses in it. Is it 3 Plus or is it 3B Plus? 3B Plus, excuse me. When asked, why the heck did you do use a bunch of Raspberry Pis and not just like an actual server, they were like, all the Raspberry Pis are cool. Which I can't argue with that. I mean, that's the reason why we're talking about it here on Hot News. Speaking of things that people are gonna talk about, Amazon apparently tweaked its algorithm to start promoting its own branded products on its storefront whenever you search for a given item. And this is apparently after a lot of internal debate between engineers and lawyers and a whole bunch of people within Amazon stating that this is not good for the consumer. Some of our products aren't better than the competition. This doesn't make sense. And then the lawyers obviously advocating that uh, this could potentially be bringing antitrust lawsuits upon us if we're only pushing our products to consumers when they're searching for something else. So we'll have to see where this goes, but apparently Amazon made the tweak late last year in order to up its profit margins because obviously they would make more profit on a product that they sell versus a third party. So we'll see where this develops, if there will inevitably be an antitrust lawsuit coming against Amazon, or if this is just akin to somebody like Walmart or Target let's say putting their great value items in front of the store and that way you can check them out but you can still walk by them which you just scroll down the page my friends and then in the worst news story of the day which is actually okay but I'm just gonna read you the headline uh, part of the facility where Russia stores smallpox and Ebola exploded yes in a Russian biohazard containment facility there was an explosion that happened with a fire and glass shattering and everything. Apparently it didn't get anywhere near the biohazardous material, so everything's fine. But just so you know, the apocalypse could come any second just because of stuff like this. Speaking of stuff like this, this is the end of hot news. Thank you so much for watching us talk to you about tech news. 
why don't you check out deals on tech products at the link in the video description for UFD deals. Go to UFD.tech, save money on tech products. It just makes sense to do it. Anyways, it also makes sense to hit the like button on this video, get subscribed to UFD Tech in case you're interested in staying up to date on all of our tech related stuff, including, as I teased a little bit earlier, that Need for Speed Underground 2 remastered and ray trace video coming out with that. And if you wanna watch me stream it, you can check me out over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple. I've been streaming Need for Speed Underground 2. It's amazing. Okay, I'm out of here. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Bye. Why? It's not at all. Reese fisticuffs. I'm, I'm there. Let's go. Let's go.